This is the way the back of the boat looked when I first got it. Um, it sort of slopes down in the back, which was, I guess, some style decision. But it's a foot and a half or so wide at the bottom, but tapers to just three inches at the top. So it's taking up a foot and a half of space, but that ledge at the top is useless for setting anything on or really doing anything with. And I want to set my generator on that far corner there. So I've made this template that's the shape of the back of the boat and I'm tracing it out on some Nidacore, honeycomb core for fiberglass and I'll make several of these shapes that will be supports for the shelf. They follow the shape of the boat on that side that I'm working on there. And then when on the boat, there'll be... Cutting it with one of those vibrating tools and a metal cutting blade. Um, so I'm tracing it out again. I'm going to make three of these. There'll be supports for the shelf. The side I'm working on now matches the shape of the boat and then there's a vertical and a horizontal part. Wow. So that is a really strange and irritating noise when sped up. So I spared you the cutting out of the third identical part. And there they are, three identical supports for my shelf. Here I'm cutting out the glass cloth that's going to go on them and this is the beginning of a mistake. This is the woven cloth. It's I think three ounce cloth for surfboards and I don't know any better so I'm putting that on without chop strand mat which is what you would do if you wanted to make a super light yet strong structure. But for my application, there's going to be a lot of weight on the countertop. And so I really should have put on more layers. At, at least a layer of chopped strand, then the woven, and then a layer of chopped strand mat on top. Here I filled in the edge where the core was exposed with fairing compound. I've sanded that and I'm putting gel coat on at the moment. I've got some 4x4 four four blocks that are doing a almost decent job of holding these panels on edge while I paint each of them in turn with the gel coat. And this is your bonus video. This little lizard was sitting on one of these parts when I came out to start working. This is using a belt sander to knock down any sharp glass fibers that were hanging over the edge of the part. And I also use this to refine the shape of the part just a little bit. Um, to match the back of the boat perfectly. I'm wearing a face mask in case little chunks of glass get thrown out at me. Here I'm preparing these supports to be glued to the back of the boat. I use thickened polyester resin as the glue and I'm trying to come up with a way to use tape to hold the panels in place while that thickened 
resin hardens. So now that I've got it kind of where I like it, I can peel one side of that V uh, made of tape and that way I can get access to the part that's going to go against the boat and I'll put the thickened resin on there and then set it back up the way it was. Here are the parts after being glued in place. I made another small piece here that goes under the generator that's two pieces of Nidacor wide with this thick piece of glass down the middle. There's three layers of glass down the middle. I think on the sides of that small piece. But these other ones are just one layer. Now I've I'm going to attach them better to the boat. They, they're just sort of tacked on there with the thickened epoxy. And so I've sanded them. I've sanded the back of the boat to make it rough so that resin can get a grip in there. And I'm cutting what's called tabbing. These pieces of glass assure a bond. And I'm making three packs of three. A, a wide one, a medium one, and then a thin one in each pack. And I'll lay these down one on top of the other in the corner, starting with the narrow one, then the wider one, and then the widest one on top. And it's made this flange that has a lot of surface area to bond to the back of the boat and then wraps around that corner and also has a lot of surface area on those supports. Nidacore is translucent and so I can use the shadow of my straight edge on top to help me line it up with the ends of these supports and this is what it looks like from above this probably isn't the most efficient way to lay out a curve but it works is I've got my starting point and then at different angles I go out the same distance and mark a spot and repeat and repeat and repeat to roughly build up my curve. I want a curve here where I walk out onto the dive platform so I don't have a sharp corner that I'm always running into there. This is a problem. This is the foot for the solar panel rack and there's a bolt there so I need to make room for that. Here I'm cutting the curve that I marked and now a test fit of the countertop. I've put down a different very flat countertop and covered it with wax paper so that the Nidacore laying on it will be perfectly flat when I laminate the fiberglass on it because whatever shape it has it's going to stay that shape once the resin and glass harden. And this is really overkill. I put down a layer of chopped strand mat, now a layer of woven cloth. I'll follow that up with a layer of chopped strand mat. And then just for good measure, I'll put in another layer of cloth and another layer of chopped strand mat. Um, this made the countertop very strong, which I wanted it to be. Although I could probably span something with this and set my car on it and it would be fine. It's, it's way overbuilt and a little bit heavier than it needs to be. 
with all these layers, and I did the same on both sides, it probably weighs somewhere around 30 pounds or so. 25, 30 pounds, somewhere in there, which is a lot heavier than it needs to be. Doubling the thickness of the core will make it four times stronger without adding any weight at all. Here I'm doing something with the edge. I've painted epoxy on it. I've got a little strip of quarter inch thick NIDA core and I'm laying some chopped strand mat on that. I already laid a strip on the other side and I've got it sitting on wax paper so that it doesn't stick. And now I'm going to pick it up with my chopped strand mat in wet resin and I'm setting it next to the countertop and I'm using wax paper to wrap around these 4x4 four four blocks um, so that I don't accidentally glue the countertop or the edging to the blocks. But I'm going around and pushing it up against the countertop. And remember, it's got wet epoxy with chopped strand mat on both sides. Here I'm going along with a dental syringe and putting a bead of resin right at the edge of the countertop. So I've added some other supports um, before putting the countertop on the boat. That vertical piece rests on a ledge that's at the back and those pieces that angle in are resting on a ledge sort of halfway up that was formed into the hall as a, another style feature. These panels have a lot of glass on them and I'm now tabbing them in to the existing vertical supports and I'm running the glass that, that holds it on, the tabbing glass, all the way out to the end of the vertical supports so that they actually add layers to those supports that I screwed up by only putting the one layer of woven on. So now they've got another layer of ch chopped strand on top and another layer of woven. See how far around I, I go on that flat panel. That makes a lot of surface area glued on with resin. I mean, this is everything you make like this is just glued together. And by having a huge surface area like that, that assures a bond so that it's not going to, like, come loose from the boat and fall off with my countertop and my generator. Here I'm going to be tabbing this inside corner. And fiberglass, glass cloth will not go around a sharp 90 degree corner. You need a bit of a radius. It doesn't need that much, but a half inch radius is usually enough. So I'm forming the radius with the spoon out of fairing compound. Once I've got enough in there all the way up, I can just run once up with the spoon. And now I take this putty knife and remove the excess that came off the sides when I ran the spoon up to make the, the curve. Now I'm painting, it, the, the, the fillet has hardened and I painted the surfaces with resin. 
And once again, I'm going to put down three layers. The first being chopped strand mat. The resin that I just painted on is sticky enough to hold it in place on the vertical surface. And I like to start in the corner and get that tacked down before doing the rest of it. See, now that while that resin is still wet, I'm putting on a layer of woven cloth that is really the strongest part of this. And, and now another outside layer of chopped strand mat to protect the woven cloth underneath and it adds thickness and some strength and it's smoother if you were to want to like fare that in and gel coat. So now is the stress test. I weigh probably twice as much as my generator and the generator doghouse combined. So if this will hold me It'll probably hold the generator. And here I'm using fairing compound to fill in the front of the counter and now I'm prepping that end of the counter for gluing the, the generator doghouse onto it. I wiped off any grit and now I've got some acetone and I'm going to wipe it down several times. I have this technique for wipe down. Is I take a paper towel and I fold it in half and then fold it in half again so I've got like a napkin sized square. And I can wipe down with one side then I flipped it. I'm wiping down with the second side now I can open it up and reverse it and I've got two more clean sides to wipe down with. And another clean side. And I usually save the last side for like any heavy stuff where I'm likely to get a lot of schmutz on it or abrade the paper towel. So now I'm painting resin in the area where the doghouse will be. Trying not to get it outside of the lines too much. And I've got a layer of chopped strand mat that's going to be like a sponge that will soak up resin and adhere to the countertop and to the underside of the doghouse. I'm being very careful as I soak this with resin right at the edge because I don't want to slop a lot of resin over the edge onto parts that won't be covered by the doghouse. But once I've finished that edge then I go pretty quickly and wet out this chopped strand mat I make sure that there's no air left in the mat it has like a color change it almost goes transparent once you get the last of the air out of it and I've also painted resin on the underside of the doghouse and I'm trying my best to maneuver it into position without dripping any resin onto the nice part of the countertop. This was surprisingly easy with a minimum of schmutz slopped around. I'm positioning it right where I want it to be because once this resin sets up I won't be able to move it it won't come off of the countertop wiping up just a couple of drops of resin 
and the resin is hardened now. This is a bit later. And I've got my doghouse on the counter on my boat. And I think this is a lot more useful than this area of the boat was before with that little three inch wide ledge that's raised up at the back so that things can't roll off the back of the counter and off of the boat. That's that quarter inch night accord that's the raised up part. And that's just it for this video.